In the modern day, being good with computers means one of two things. You can edit a PDF without needing to ask Clippy, or you know what a VPN is. This is largely due to how intuitive modern UI is. This is great because it increases the usability of technology, but it does have some drawbacks. Namely, it makes computers seem almost mystical. They work off magic. And some people are simply more attuned to this magic. So what's the average person to do? Okay, so CPUs. Most everyone knows what they are, but I think many people have a hard time imagining how they work. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit and is where the bulk of the computer operations happen. From a high level, CPUs have two main components, the Arithmetic Logic Unit, or ALU, and the Control Unit. The ALU is like your older sibling that wrote a paper for a class you're taking, and the Control Unit is you turning it into your teacher. The ALU does almost all the heavy lifting and the control unit simply manages the flow of information. How this works is the ALU can do a mixture of both arithmetic operations like add and subtract alongside logical operations such as and, or, x, or, etc. The values these operations are performed on are fed into the ALU from the control unit that retrieves them from memory. As you can see in this graphic, other data is piped into the ALU like the opcode and status. These values are information that the ALU needs to understand what to do with the operands it's given. These encode what operation to perform and where the data will be stored. Depending upon the operation, this data is either stored in the CPU's registers or L1, L2, or L3 caches. This is a good time to talk about memory. Memory. Remember. What you should remember is GigoDev is free. That's right, GigoDev, the best place to learn code, is free. Other companies will charge you an arm and a leg for the luxury of learning the code. Those of us here at GigoDev don't believe in such elitism. We believe that people should know the pain of reading C++ code and the simple joy of switching to Python after. With hundreds of lessons in the industry's most popular languages, what more could the people ask for? Perhaps some way to make learning easier? Well, GigoDev has you covered once again with our custom-built code teacher. CodeTeacher doesn't simply answer questions, it analyzes your code and automatically finds errors and suggests solutions. All of these wonderful features brought to you free of charge, only on Gigo.dev. Okay, that's enough shilling for me, back to the video. When it comes to computers, memory is a tricky thing to talk about, because there's actually a few different forms of it. When I say memory, a lot of people will start thinking of hard drives and SSDs. But for the purpose of computer architecture, these are often referred to as storage. Memory, on the other hand, is typically referred to as RAM or random access memory. Random access essentially means data can be written or read in any order. Funnily enough, there are actually multiple forms of this as well. Isn't talking about computers fun? The main forms are normal conventional RAM that your computer is always using, then VRAM, which is a special form of video RAM for your GPU, and finally, we may be stretching the definition of RAM here, but the final ones are CPU caches. We'll talk a bit more about VRAM in the GPU section, I'll deal with you later. but for now, let's define how RAM works. RAM is a form of volatile memory. What this means is that when power is cut from the memory, the data stored on them is lost. This sounds like a massive downside, but it actually substantially improves the access speed of things that need to be stored for a short amount of time. Think of RAM like when you need to remember a short list of numbers for a couple of seconds, so you try super hard to remember only that and don't focus on anything else until you need them again in a few seconds. I'll briefly touch on RAM types, but for the purpose of this video it isn't super important. There are two main types of RAM. Dynamic RAM, or DRAM, which stores each bit in separate capacitors and static RAM, or SRAM, which is faster and uses flip-flops. Okay, I know this sounds insane, but we don't have time. These can be combined into double data rate RAM, or DDR, which moves data between these two types. Okay, we are cooked. If you imagine your computer as a kitchen, the ALU is the head chef. I know this isn't quite how kitchens work, but I've been watching the bear, so let's roll with it. Hands! Hands, please! The head chef does all the actual cooking, or in this case, the main processing for the computer. The control unit is the sous chef that preps the ingredients for the head chef. 
The control unit retrieves food from the walk-in freezer or hard drive and places it in the RAM, or in this case, the kitchen counter. To take this analogy further, imagine the head chef has pockets in his chef whites. These would be very quickly accessible to the head chef, but could not store much. This is how the L1 cache of the CPU works. It's a form of storage that is small but quickly accessible to the CPU or head chef in this analogy. The L2 cache could act as drawers in the kitchen counter that are at waist level for the chef. For larger ingredients or data, you could have a cabinet above the counter that could act as the L3 cache. After the ALU uses the data, the control unit finds the appropriate place to store it depending upon when it will be used next. The most likely to be used will be stored in more accessible areas like the L1 cache. For things that will not be touched for a long time, they will be stored in the walk-in, which is your hard drive or SSD. Okay, so now that our kitchen is more or less functioning, let's complicate things slightly. Another one. Another one. Another one. Let's say in our kitchen analogy, we wanted to be preparing multiple dishes at once. If we change nothing about our current configuration, we would only be able to produce one dish at a time. The time required to complete this operation is called the clock speed. Clock speed is measured in hertz, which is a measure of frequency. One hertz means an operation will occur once per second. In the early days of advancing CPUs, this was the first thing to improve. And many modern day CPUs can have clock speeds up to and exceeding 5 GHz. However, quickly people realized you can only make CPU hardware so efficient. This is where multi-core CPUs come into play. Now the kitchen has multiple chefs and sous chefs working together or separate. If multiple chefs and sous chefs work together on one dish, this is called multi-threading. This is how speed can be increased in CPUs because each core or chef can be allocated to a small part of a calculation or dish. Chefs could also be working independently on their own individual dishes. This is known as parallel processing and can allow CPUs to multitask across cores. Now that there are more cooks in the kitchen, some storage becomes shared. Each chef's L1 cache and L2 cache are individual. In the analogy, these are the chef's pockets and drawers. However, now all chefs or cores must share the L3 cache. Think of this like a communal cabinet that all chefs pull spices from, or maybe a pile of tickets for orders to be made. Okay, so now we know how a computer manufactured in 2005 works, but what about the modern day? A world where machines not only print beautifully, but will copy, store, or send your ideas anywhere in the world at the touch of a button. Modern computers are used for a wide range of purposes. This means that the hardware needed to adapt to more intense use cases. In comes the GPU. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit. Its main job is pretty much what it says. It processes graphics. Before dedicated GPUs became commonplace, all graphics rendering was done on the CPU. This still happens today on more compact hardware like phones and laptops. However, almost all CPUs in these devices have integrated GPUs that help render 3D graphics. GPUs work on a similar concept to multi-core CPUs. GPUs are designed to perform thousands of small tasks exceptionally fast on specialized cores. CPUs, on the other hand, are designed to be a general-purpose command center of the computer. The Mythbusters made a pretty good demonstration to showcase the difference between CPUs and GPUs. Because the GPU has so many specialized cores, they can complete tasks significantly faster than the CPUs when it comes to parallelism. GPUs are divided into many subunits that are either named streaming multiprocessors or compute units depending upon the naming convention of the manufacturer. Each of these units contain multiple cores, most often referred to as CUDA cores by NVIDIA. Higher end GPUs may have dozens of these units with hundreds of cores. Each core is pretty similar to a simplified CPU core with an ALU inside that performs simple arithmetic operations. Because of this, GPU itself must have its own memory called VRAM. We talked a bit about this earlier in the memory section, but VRAM stands for Video Random Access Memory. GPUs use this to store all sorts of information like textures, vertex information, and general graphical assets. Similar to CPU cores, each GPU core has access to its own register and cache. However, GPUs only have two caches. 
Their L1 cache is private and only accessible to individual cores, but the L2 cache is shared amongst all cores. More recently, GPUs have begun to be used for non-graphical mathematical operations, especially for applications like simulation and AI. These fields and use cases are being actively redefined and change every day. This section of the video could be outdated in the next couple of months, if not years. And I had to summarize a lot of things in this section because GPUs are not as standardized as CPUs because their use cases change so much. But let's wrap things up. Video's getting a little long, Yikes! and I'm probably losing each of those tempting videos that you recommended. If you're interested in learning more about computer architecture, I'll provide some good links in the description to articles I found useful. Anywho, thanks for watching.